Mr. Senate President, the assurances of my highest regards. Yours sincerely, Muhammad Buhari. Joint session of National Assembly to host President Buhari on 2021 budget presentation. He's been in Second Niger Bridge. You think it's very easy to be Second Niger Bridge. He was the fellow that did the Enugu on the Expressway when he was chairman of PTF. And now he's the president fixing the road. Acknowledgement of good governance by the Buhari administration from a grateful heart. The banking insinuations of marginalization. Executive and legislature retreat ends with consensus on charting a similar track in service to Nigerians. Nothing could be achieved without peace. A guarantee of violence-free election in Ondo as contestants commit to peace. Good evening and welcome to the next talk news and the NTA. I'm Ian Ree John, live in Abuja. Reading with me tonight from Lagos is Dotun Ogunyemi. With focus on good governors, Governor William Obian of Anambra State has described as not only unfounded but also unfair insinuations in some quarters that the Buhari administration is marginalizing and neglecting the southeastern part of the country in the execution of its mandate. The governor stated this while briefing journalists after an audience with President Muhammadu Buhari. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has details. In Anambra, we love the president very much. Uh, the president has been doing well. He's building the Second Niger Bridge. You think it's very easy to be Second Niger Bridge. And I just told you that uh, he was the fellow that did the Enugu on the Expressway when he was chairman of PTF. And now he's the president fixing the road. You know, then he built Zix Masolium. You know Zix, uh, you can't talk about Nigeria without mentioning Zix. Governor Willie Obiano was in the State House to brief President Muhammad Buhari on what he called beautiful developments in Anambra State, popularly referred to as the light of the nation. I did also appraise him on the progress so far made on the Second Niger Bridge. Uh, if you watch from the side, you see that uh, almost half of that bridge has been done. You know, but because the water level is very high. Uh, the contractor working in that bridge uh, requires some equipment which they've already purchased uh, long ago uh, uh, sitting in Germany and requires some support from Central Bank to be able to bring in those equipments. I did mention that to him and the, the president noted that and said he would do something about that. The governor made a case for presidential assent to the bill passed by the National Assembly for the establishment of the Federal University of Education, Aguleri, saying his administration has already paid compensation for the land where it will be cited towards giving Anambra North Senatorial District a sense of belonging. He also called for intervention by the federal government over the recent flooding that wreaked havoc in parts of the state. Four of my local governments, that is four out of 21, uh, uh, four of them are underwater now as we speak. It affected a lot of things, uh, property which includes uh, farm produce and what have you. So I called on Mr. President to assist us at this uh, very crucial time. He promised to do something immediately. Governor Obiano also discussed with the President issues relating to the ongoing work on Enugu Onisha Expressway as well as the deplorable state of other federal roads in the state that require government intervention. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The executive and the Ninth National Assembly at a two-day joint retreat in Abuja have resolved to consolidate and deepen the existing partnership for the good of the nation. Vice President Yemi Oshibaja, who declared the retreat closed, emphasizes the need for these arms of government to work together for the benefits of the country and the people. Sit House correspondent Dido Nifade reports. Key issues at the retreat include the principle of separation of powers as enshrined in the Nigerian constitution, which is said was designed for the arms of government to creatively and innovatively work together in a cooperative manner through meaningful and constructive engagements to bring about the national development. We mustn't waste too much time on processes and procedures. 
we must do all that is in our power to serve the needs of our people. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo stresses this, that there is only one government with all arms and the various capacities contributing positively towards the realization of shared goals and purpose of government. Poverty. We have huge deficits in infrastructure. Many children are out of school. If that is our context, we will be callous and irresponsible if we don't come together and work together to ensure that we sort out these great problems that threaten our people every single day. The dogmatic emphasis on procedural niceties is a luxury we can't afford. In any event, there is no pure practice of the doctrine of separation of powers. There is no pure practice of it anywhere. The Vice President says the retreat is an indication of the determination to serve the people and not disappoint them. Ten recommendations were made, which include the call for an effective confidence-building measure in the governance process to ensure mutual respect and cordial relationship between the two parties. It's important for us to remind ourselves and assess where we are and to appreciate that what Nigerians want at all times is for us to think and act for them so that we address and take on the issues that can provide prosperity for our country. The idea is once you strengthen the relationship between the two uh, critical arms of government, that is the executive and the legislature, uh, everyone stands to gain, the country stands to gain, and th th this is what it's all about. You have to keep on talking. The executive and legislature must be seen to be doing the same thing at the same time and also resolving their differences in private and not wash their dirty linen in public. The fact that we have good relationship now does not mean we shouldn't sit down and fine tune it. There is still, we can refine it. We can smoothen rough edges, which exactly was what we did. The retreat was jointly organized by the presidency and the leadership of the National Assembly. From the State House Conference Center, Jide Onifade, NT News. Similarly, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, says the passion to serve is the motivation behind the cordial relationship between the executive and the Ninth National Assembly. The joint leadership retreat for the executive and legislative arms therefore provided a platform to chart a seamless track. National Assembly correspondent Lamia Ling has been following events at the retreat, which ended Tuesday. The executive look at issues based on maybe the figures before them, but we look at issues based on the situations on ground. It is not like we are trying to encroach in their powers. No, we are not. All we are saying is we should be carried along. It's been two days of frank talk between the executive and legislature, coming just days to the presentation of the 2021 appropriation bill before the National Assembly. For participants at these joint retreats, it has helped align ideas of building Project Nigeria. The essence basically is just to consolidate and not take the relationship for granted. There is a commitment on both sides, especially from the leadership. The president in the, from the inception had shown his resolve and commitment to collaborate and cooperate with the National Assembly. When the bill or the policy gets to the National Assembly, it can go smoothly. Even the issue of budget that takes forever. Information and Culture Minister Laya Mohammed says both appointed and elected officials share common commitments of providing value service to Nigerians. Between yesterday and today, we've seen that actually what binds legislative and the executive together is much more than what actually divides them. And that all that is needed is actually more understanding, more tolerance and better collab you know, collaboration and cooperation. Governance is about partnership. Governance is about dialogue. And no one single arm of government can claim to have complete ownership of the government process. We can only succeed when we put hands together and call ourselves responsible to our actions. For whatever is the new normal, as the issues causing friction in the executive-legislative relationship have been smoothened. It is very important that this is happening at a critical time when the PIB has just been presented before the National Assembly. At the end of the day, we all agree 
that we must work together. So we don't have divergent opinions as regards to the development of the country. So the aim of governance is to make sure that we give the people of Nigeria, as been enshrined in the constitution, we give them the desired development they need. The technical committee set up composed of representatives from both ends of the table as directed by the president will expectedly work to achieve a smooth executive legislative ride in the running of governments. Lami Ali, NTA News. And away from the retreats, the Senate has received a request from President Muhammadu Buhari to present the 2021 budget before a joint session of the National Assembly on Thursday, 8th of October, 2020. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, read the executive communication shortly after it reconvened for Tuesday's plenary. Nigeria's role in stabilizing the Gambia is not limited to entrenchment of democracy. Rather, it involves building human resources for security, economy and social development. And so, for that, the Gambia says it is holding onto Nigeria tight. Usman Aleu reports. In this hall, four ministers from the Gambia and Nigeria. This means the meeting here is more than just a passing interest on diplomacy. The Gambia believes so much in Nigeria for her role in West Africa and the good image of Africa which Nigeria portrays to the world. If Nigeria was to withdraw from the judiciary, our judiciary would be completely crippled. And thanks to the support of Nigeria, we've been able to build today our judiciary with homegrown lawyers and magistrates. But that could have not been possible without the support of Nigeria. Um, we're delighted to see that um, the democratic principles, the will of the people, um, is now uh, fully uh, restored uh, in, in, in the Gambia. Mark of honor, the Gambia has decided to offer a posthumous award to a Nigerian military officer for achieving successes in his dual responsibilities to the Gambia and Nigeria before his death. General Dada was the first officer highly professional Nigerian officer who came with a Nigerian training, an assistant group called NATA. This meeting, the minister says, another turning point in strengthening bilateral relations between the two countries. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. Now talking politics, 10 governorship candidates contesting in the October 10 election in Ondo State have signed the peace accord for a violence-free governorship poll. The agreement is expected to guarantee a peaceful atmosphere before, during and after the exercise. Lubukola Aduwo reports. All 17 political parties are participating in the governorship election slated for October 10. Only 10 of them were present to sign the peace accord. The chairman, National Committee on Peace, Abdul Salami Abubakar, who joined the session via Zoom, said the peace accord is intended to enable the electorate feel secured while coming out to vote in an atmosphere devoid of chaos and fear. Citizens should know that destruction and violence disturb peace, and nothing could be achieved without peace. Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu urged political parties, their candidates and supporters to promote and support all efforts geared towards a peaceful and transparent election. Without peace, our deployment plans, new innovations in results management, the safety of personnel, security of materials, and above all, the credibility of the elections will be severely undermined. The three major candidates promise to abide by all the rules guiding the election and accept the outcome of the poll. As governor of the state, I, I will also still address the people on the need for them to keep away from violence. Nobody ambition towards anybody's blood. I am absolutely, absolutely committed to a peaceful election. Goodwill messages by some stakeholders centered on the need to raise the bar in terms of delivering credible election in Ondo State. In Akure, Olubukola, Aduwo, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Director General, Voice of Nigeria and member of the National Committee on Ondo Election, 
Ositta Okechuku says the All Progressives Congress is confident of victory in the Saturday's governorship election in the state. He said this during a media briefing in Abuja. Adibola Brooklyn Sunday reports. <laughs> Rotimi Akere Dolu of the APC is one of the candidates participating in the Ondo State governorship election. Continuity, continuity of the good works going on. Osita Okechuku said, within the limited resources of the state, Governor Akere Dolu has performed excellently, and re electing him is the best option for the state to continue to enjoy even more dividends of democracy. They should be more concerned that those infrastructure developments is what will provide employment, is what pro provide more food on the table, and they stand to gain because Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari has an enormous plan to develop the bitumen, the wood deposit bitumen in, in the axis where Ondo is. Osita Okechuku also urged the people of Ondo State to come out en masse to participate in the election. There will be peaceful voting day on 10th of October. Let nobody drum you to not to come that there will be violence. There won't be any violence. 17 political parties are participating in the election, which will hold in 18 local government areas of the state on Saturday, October 10. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday. NTA News. Away from the Ondo Post, but still on politics, the All Progressives Congress APC is continuing with its reconciliation process of aggrieved members across the country. The latest is the inauguration of the Bayelsa Reconciliatory Committee, headed by the Governor of Gombe State, Governor Inua Yahaya, ahead of Bayelsa Central and West by election. Austin Anyebe reports. The Chairman Ketko Extraordinary National Convention Planning Committee, APC, Mi Malabuni, represented by the Secretary, said a lot has been achieved in the past three months as many aggrieved members have been brought to the fold through reconciliations. He tasked the Baisa Reconciliatory Committee, chaired by the Governor of Gombe State, Inua Ihaya, to see to the victory of APC in the forthcoming Baisa by elections. Let me say with all sense of appreciation and fulfillment that the committee had in the last three months reconciled life threatening challenges for the party in 11 states across the country. Chairman of the committee tax APC members across the country to close ranks and say through the turbulent period of the party, expressing optimism that with strategies being mapped out by the national committee, the party will work stronger. He pledged the committee's commitment to be fair and just to aggrieved members during the assignment. At this moment, that we have galvanized our forces that we have reunited and that we have reconciled. We are just going to polish, you know, the arrangements that our people have down the ladder so that we will work together and assiduously assure the success of the party. The inauguration was attended by some members of the National Working Committee in Abuja, Austin and Yebe, NT News. X-Rain initiatives to change the narrative of the teaching, teaching profession. Details in the second part of tonight's news. Just stay. My tail don't be your mate. He don't live for your grade. If he knock you a quarter, tell no good the hell up. Anytime I want to celebrate, he goes so the glut in no delay. He they sweep me like a junk on a My tail don't know that he's a Make that switch today and enjoy all calls at 11 combo per second. Free data on every recharge and double data for three months on the network with the widest 4G coverage. Okay, my tail. Airtel, the smartphone network.
moms create special family moments with their love. Celebrate these delicious moments with Indomie noodles. Indomie noodles, tasty nutrition, good for you. Make a load recharge card and beg. I don't find the money! We you are intended to win for the Nine Mobile Mega Millions Pro more. One million naira for one person every day for 90 days. Two smartphones every hour, every day for 90 days. Ten million naira star price leader. New customers just come with side or buy a new line. And we go summon you free one gigabyte plus 500 naira a time. So make you the recharge 200 naira or more. Make you for the win. Nine Mobile. For over 70 years, we've protected our homes against germs together. And now is no different. So let's disinfect and protect our floors and surfaces every day. Dettol. Protect what's worth fighting for. This is my time. You are not going to spoil it. This time is precious. Don't let mosquitoes spoil the fun. Relax and enjoy the moments that matter. Use Bagon Fast Acting Insect Killing Protection for your home. Bagon, take back your home. S.C. Johnson, a family company. Thank you for staying. The federal government has put in, in measures to revitalize and reposition the teaching profession in the country due to the huge gaps in quantity and quality of teachers at all levels of the nation's education system. That resulted to drop in output and moral standard. In this special report, Hammond Dabani takes a look at the policies and incentives just approved by the president to teachers and how that could change the narrative. Recovery has shown that over 60% of teachers do not have job satisfaction and are psychologically discouraged due to low take-home pay, welfare packages, and perceived disregard for their contribution to national building. The postulation that teachers' reward are in heaven is a common saying in Nigerian society that gives credence to the fact that teachers are not meant to live well on earth. But the present administration think otherwise that teachers at all levels should enjoy the labor of their hands while alive and not when they are dead. This was backed with the approval of a number of incentives by the federal government at the celebration of this year's World Teachers' Day. He is the camera with which the society look at itself. A teacher that is of high repute is more than a father of the children, is more than a mother of the children. He is the target, he is the example setter. So whatever the child becomes, he is a reflection of what the teacher is or was. I personally, I will give kudos to Mr. President especially for deeming it fit to do this to Nigerian teachers. It will definitely go a long way, it will go a long way to boost the morale of the teachers. A motivated teacher can still make a difference. So I think it's going to make a lot of difference. Number one, we are going to be able to retain more teachers. Number two, it will give them confidence. Number three is that it will boost their morale. With these intense incentives, people will now struggle to become teachers. People will now struggle to read education because they know that this chunk of incentives are there. There is this quote by Bill Gates that says technology is just a tool in terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them. The teacher is the most important. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. Fall academic session has resumed in Katsina after six months of school's closure due to COVID-19 pandemic as students were seen observing strict compliance with safety protocols put in place by the state government. As soon as state government's directive for schools in the state to resume second term academic session in strict compliance with COVID-19 safety protocols, students expressed happiness with the resumption after six months of school closure. We are not doing anything until we eat and sleep, but now we are going to learn anything, many things, and we are going to have some competitions to do so that it improve our skills. 
I'm very much happy because I like studying. I don't like staying at home doing no tips. Now that we have come back, we're very happy because we're going to continue from where we stop. At both public and private schools, hand wash and sanitizers were provided while students use fix marks and observe physical distancing. The idea of reopening schools today is to be able to revise a little that had been done before the COVID-19 emergence and then to allow students to write examinations. To further ensure safety of the students and their teachers, the state government designed two learning sessions in a day, with SS1 and JSS1 having lessons from 7.30 in the morning to 12.30 p.m., while SS2 and JSS2 to learn between 12.30 p.m. and 5.30 in the evening. Meanwhile, wife of the state governor, Hadiza Aminu Bello Masari, had earlier distributed no fewer than one million face masks to students in Katsina as part of her contribution to curtail the spread of coronavirus among the resuming students. In Katsina, Abdul Malik Hassan, NTA News. And away from education, Sarah's attention has been channeled towards the National Water Resources Bill 2020. As the Nigerian Society of Engineers says, it has taken a professional look at the bill and enlightening Nigerians on the gains of the bill when passed into law. The NSC President Babagana Mohamed said this after a meeting with the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, at the Ministry's headquarters in Abuja. Olusheye Adiago tells us more. Babagana Mohamed is the 32nd president of Nigeria Society of Engineers, NLC, an umbrella organization for engineering profession in Nigeria. He believes the NLC is in the best position to give a detailed account of Nigeria's infrastructure. He says it is time for Nigerians to ignore all bias to the National Water Resources Bill 2020. These people are saying people's lands are going to be claimed houses are going to be taken, people are going to pay money. I have not seen where all these things are. The bills are clear. Though this meeting is for familiarization, discussions also focused on the controversy surrounding the National Water Resources Bill 2020. Minister of Water Resources Suleiman Adamu blames the current orders hindering the process of the bill on lack of proper education on its import and prospects for the country. If you are advocating why you should throw away this bill, throw away this bill. You are throwing away an opportunity and depriving Nigerians of an opportunity for better financing of the water sector to improve the water supply and sanitation situation. Suleiman Adamu further explained that the protection of Nigeria's water resources as well as its development, conservation, management and control would aid in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, Olusheye Adiagbo, NTA News. The Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, says the federal government will continue to give adequate support and professional guidelines to states willing to embark on the construction of cargo airport to meet international best standards. The minister was speaking when he received an audience to Governor of Anambra State, Willie Obiano, preparatory for the completion and inauguration of Omwari Cargo Airport on an initial date of April 2021. The minister appealed for continued collaboration with regulatory authorities to ensure all requirements for the construction and operation of airports are met. Governor Obiano says he was in the minister's office to brief him on the progress of work and to officially inform him of the inauguration date of the project. The airport, which has the second longest runway after the Mortala Mohammed International Airport, was conceived to promote economic activities and empower Anambra citizens and Nigerians. In other news, Governor Yaya Abelu has urged site engineers handling federal builds in Kogi, particularly the 1.7 kilometers Mortala Mohammed Bridge, Damata, Lokoja, local government area, to hasten repair works. Correspondent Francis Udoja reports that the governor gave the advice during an assessment of ongoing repair works on the bridge. Governor Bello, after several minutes searching for a cogent answer, finally got one from one of the site engineers. Talk, if you can talk, talk. Feel free. Because we want to help you, we want to help you. Sir, the contractor has borrowed money to start up the work. Now waiting for the mobilization because that, that one he borrowed has exhausted. Mm. So we are waiting for mobilization. That's why you see small TS. The second bridge we are using now is giving way. 
is greatly affected now. At that joint over there, little cars, small cars like this will find it difficult to pass. In no time, that one will give way and it will affect the whole bridge. If it, if it affects the whole bridge, it means movement from south to north and vice versa through Lokonja Kogi State is going to be impeded. Wondering what could be responsible for the delay in the mobilization, the governor promised to seek for answers and healthy actions that will hasten the completion of the project from Koton Karifi in Kogi local government area. Francis Dojo, NTA News. Let's start here to Lagos where Dotun will bring us more reports. Dotun, it's over to you. Thank you, ERA. The Nigerian Institute of Medical Research is poised to introduce new diagnostic procedure for blood genetics and transfusion, a cutting-edge technology that will improve patient's care and encourage voluntary blood donation in the country. Lane Lilike reports that the smart center where the project will be carried out was also inaugurated. Blood banking and transfusion is a field of medicine that grapples with a series of challenges. They include questionable safety and inconsistent supply of blood. This research by the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research on blood genetics and transfusion with other collaborators aims to eliminate threats to blood safety in the country. The smart center where the research is underway will, among other assignments, design a smart bag technology for tracking available blood from source to the end user. And they can screen the blood uh, for appropriate organisms, maybe even much more, um, and then compare that to the, the, the current system, um, looking at blood from other laboratory. For clinical trials, the institute is partnering with three other hospitals in Lagos to ascertain the effectiveness of the innovation. Yes, we are running blood transfer in the country. How safe is this blood? Okay, if they are safe, of course, it's not everybody that needs the whole blood for therapy. A lot of people that don't even do it for money, you understand? So they, they, they are working on it, trying to ensure that people donate blood voluntarily and not by compelling them. So by doing that, they first earn the price. The project is a five-year research plan that will evaluate the usability, utility, and effectiveness of smart bag technology in monitoring the efficacy of donor blood used for transfusion. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. In line with the promise by Globalcom Nigeria to deliver quality and affordable services to its millions of subscribers, the brand has introduced a new tariff plan known as Berekete. Our Yusuf Jibo was at the official unveiling and now reports. Global have the best data plan, to the best volumes in the market. So ladies and gentlemen, this is truly Berekete here for you. Globerekete is the latest in a series of moves by Globalcom Nigeria to give its subscribers more value for their money, especially during this coronavirus pandemic era. The new prepaid tariff plan rewards customers with amazing voice and data benefits after every recharge with a minimum of 100 naira. Uh, it gives 700% bonus to the customers on a uh, recharge of 100 Naira minimum and the multiples of 100 Naira is given. When you activate a new SIM on Berekete, you get uh, 600 Naira of instant bonus. And also, all the new customers will get 4 months 100% uh, data uh, bonus on plan purchase. Lagos Regional Sales Manager Globacom Andy Abdul Razak stressed the company's commitment to surpassing the expectations of users. Globalcom is a game changer and innovative leader in the telecommunications industry. At Globalcom, we are continually seeking new ways to add value to the lives of our esteemed customers. A-list music producer Don Jazzy and singer Tenny the Entertainer were unveiled as latest Glow ambassadors at the event. I'm 
excited and I can't wait to start, you know, enjoying my Globe Barricade. Global.com says, to migrate to Globe Barricade, subscribers should dial star 230 hash to enjoy the benefits. The new plan is open to new and existing customers. In Lagos, I will use Jibo, NTA News. It's time, time to take our second break on the network news. Ieri will be back with more reports shortly. We don't must reach Abby. Okay. Guys, the mechanic is almost here. Ah, what, the <laughs> what do you think is wrong? Ah, ah, madam, not this not the way they worry this your bike. Oh. Mm, carburetor and radiator, you don't Mafuka. Fuel fixer. A 50 task. I guess I have no choice. Give me size 10 Allen Q. Madam, the talk don't spoil. You need to buy new one. New one at 16,000. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll be on my way now. For renting your tools. Do what you've never done before. Find your first with these mega data plans. Dial star triple seven hash. Guess what? What? I scored a hat trick today. Cool. Wow. And how did you save it? Just do your hands like mm. this. And hold your nose like this. Body odor is caused by germs. That's why you need the new improved Dettol Cool Soap, which protects against 99.9% .9 odor causing germs with an extra burst of menthol freshness. Dettol, be 100% sure. <laughs> Make a load recharge card and beg. The money we are intended to win for the nine mobile mega millions from more one million naira for one person every day for 90 days, two smartphones every hour, every day for 90 days, 10 million naira star price. Need the new customers just come with side or buy a new line, and we go summer you free one gigabyte plus 500 naira a time. So make you the recharge 200 naira or more, make you for the win. Nine mobile. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day. NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264 or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk App for iOS or Android, Intelsat 901 Degree East. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. In loving memory of our dearly beloved dad, husband and grandfather, Otumba Dr. Kunle Olasope, JPMON, who slept in the Lord on 6th October 2019. It's been a year that you left this world, dad. K, as you're fondly called, we miss you sorely, but we are comforted as we believe you are in a better place and resting in peace. Your legacy lives on. Jumoke Olasope, Bere, for the family. <laughs> Good to have you back. The Nigerian Army is to implement new enhanced allowance for its officers and soldiers. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Turku Burutai, announced this at the combined first, second and third quarter Chief of Army Staff Conference holding in Widuguri, Borno State. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has details. Yet another periodic Chief of Army Staff's conference where field commanders, principal staff officers, heads of the units and formations assembled to reflect and review operations and exercises of the period in focus. This is with a view to re-strategizing and ensuring optimal performance in ongoing and new operations. We got approval for implementation of new allowances as contained in the Manual of Financial Administration 2017. We are also expectantly looking forward to the delivery of major equipment procured by the federal government to aid our counter-insurgency operations. We have also implemented critical aspects of Nigerian Army of 2016, established new formations and commands, such as 4 Special Forces Command, 
Command Area Vehicle Command Operation Lafia Dole, Special Army Super Camps Faskari Alawa and Ngamdu. To Governor Baganazlu, the route to peace and security in the Northeast is challenging but attainable. We must not allow temporary setbacks to overwhelm us, and we should remain steadfast in our collective effort to free our nation from the dreaded insurgents. The platform also commensurate with the nation's fallen heroes. Theta Command Operation Lafia Adole and promise to support the families they left behind. From Meduguri, the Bruno State Capital, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Many thanks, Ismail. We will be joining another center tonight and uh, Kaduna to be with Suleiman standing by for more news. Suleiman. And welcome to Kaduna. We will not relent in routing out insurgents, bandits, and other criminal elements until Nigerians facing various kinds of threats are safe. Those are the words of Chief of the Air Staff, Air Major Sadiq Baba Abubakar, while commanding pilots of fighter jets and choppers on a mission in different parts of the Northwest. Abdullah Mohammed reports. Combat pilots and engineers getting ready to fly out. Today's mission is to hit targets which intelligence confirms are hideouts for insurgents, bandits and other criminal elements given ordinary citizens sleepless nights. We'll make sure we neutralize them. What stands out in preparation for this mission is that each of the combat pilots sets out with heads high. This is because the chief of the air staff, Air Marshal ba Sadiq Baba Abubakar, had words of encouragement for them. Try to do your best. In succession, the choppers and jets flew out. On his staff of office, he sat and waited for their return. Upon returning, the faces of the pilots sent the message. Mission accomplished. And what a proud man the chief was, as the young pilots are among those he groomed. We are very, very excited seeing that very young officers in their apprentices and early thirties probably are the ones that are conducting this mission. Now you have a taste of what it takes for a mission to be led by the caliber of the chief of the air staff. But the mission of the distinguished flying star does not stop here. The chief's representative was welcomed by 594 military personnel who will be undergoing regimental courses on weapon handling and other critical operations for the success of military operations across the country. The personnel due for the training are drawn from the Air Force, Army and military intelligence. In Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed. And that's all we can take from Kaduna tonight. Many thanks, Suleiman. Now, the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, has earmarks 457 million naira for disbursement to people deeply impacted by COVID-19 pandemic in Kano State. Resident representative of the UN agency, Mohamed Yahya, disclosed this during the official launch of the intervention at the Kano government house. Abdullahi Mustafa has details. COVID-19, which was declared a global pandemic by the World Health Organization in March this year, resulted in health and socio-economic challenges. Reducing the impact of the pandemic is the main objective of the United Nations Development Program's cash transfer project. In collaboration with the World Food Program, the project supports people in states deeply impacted by the pandemic. In Kano State, 9,600 households and 2,500 SMEs are to benefit from cash transfers and startups amounting to 457.6 million naira. As part of a 1.3 billion naira cash transfer program across Nigeria, it is my firm belief that the project will be implemented in a transparent and accountable manner for the benefit of those who are identified as beneficiaries of the project. I would also like to appeal for more institutional support for the state in the battle against the pandemic. Among contributors to the One UN COVID-19 Basket Fund are the EU, Japanese government, and other international donor agencies. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. The Nigerian Television Authority has expressed readiness to partner with organizations to strengthen national integration and promote peace and unity in the country. The Executive Director Administration, Steve Ekpo, re-emphasized this while receiving members of the Youth Goal for Peace project on behalf of the Director General of the NTA, 
Alika Akwanachi Arua reports. Youth Goal for Peace project is seeking support from the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, to further sensitize citizens of the country on the need to come together as one, irrespective of tribe or religion, to move the nation forward. If we can play as a team, we will defeat all of our common enemy, be it insecurity, be it ignorance, be it poverty. Executive Director Admin Steve Igbo pledged NTA's readiness to go the extra mile to ensure the goal and objectives of the group is realized. I am happy that um, despite the problems we face, despite the impediments, the handicaps, there are still young people who believe in the project called Nigeria. In the same vein, Nigeria is possible group is also seeking NTS collaboration in promoting peace and unity to strengthen national integration. As we are heading into a new phase of our nation, this message is something that the whole nation needs, and Nigerians both at home and in the diaspora would need it. The group was received on behalf of the DG by the Executive Director of Marketing, who reaffirmed the support of the authority to the goal of the group. This is a call for every one of us, it's not only for the youth, but I'm most happy that it's coming from the youth who are the future of this country. The visit of the two groups is part of activities to mark Nigeria's 60th independence anniversary in Abuja, Alika, Okwanachi, Arua, NC News. An Ondo State High Court sitting in Akure has sentenced the founder of Tito Bire Prison Chapel, Akure. Prophet Alpha Babatunde and five others to life imprisonment, having found them guilty of aiding and abetting to kidnap one year old Gold Kolawali from his church last year. The court also sentenced the convicted to seven year jail term on another charge bordering on kidnapping. Olajide Bello reports that the seven year jail term and life imprisonment are without option of fine and may run concurrently. In his judgment said the accused persons were guilty of the two count charge of kidnapping and aiding and abating of a one-year-old gold Kolaole based on the circumstantial evidence as argued by the prosecution. He maintained that the alleged complicity and compromise by the understate police command after the report of the missing child got to it which led to the burning of Sajitabure Church fell short of the duties and responsibility of the police. The court described the evidence put before it by the defense counsel as lacking in merit and subsequently sentenced the accused accordingly. It is clear that on count one, the six of them were sentenced to seven years imprisonment without labor. On count two, they were sentenced to life imprisonment without an option of a fine. Then the seventh defendant, because they say we have not uh, proved beyond reasonable doubt the offense of a destroying property or evidence is a discharge and acquitted. Prophet Alpha Babatunde and five others were first arraigned at a magistrate court in Akure on December 23, 2019, over the disappearance of one year old Gold Kolaole in his church last year, November, and they were since kept at Olokuta Correctional Facility from Akure for Large Day Bello. NTA News. Let's take another break. Network News continues shortly. of oil industries, subsidy and fuel prices on focus this week on NTA Tuesday Live. What are derivable benefits to the workings of the economy and to the people? Find out tonight from those who should know. NTA Tuesday Live, every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. It promises to be incisive and educative. Join us. With gratitude to God for a life well spent, we, the entire family of late Mr. Lawrence Obeta Makata and the family of late Mr. Michael Ugoke Ezelike in Enugu State, cordially invite you to the burial and funeral ceremony of our beloved mother, sister, grandmother, great-grandmother, mother-in-law and auntie, late Mrs. Caroline Wakego Makata, Ni Ugoke. She was aged 82. Burial and funeral arrangements are as follow. Thursday, 8 October 2020, 6 p.m. Service of songs at her husband's compound. 
Friday, 9th October 2020, 7 a.m. Body leaves Faith Foundation Mortuary in Suka to her compound. 8 a.m. Body lying in state at her compound. 10 a.m. Burial service at St. Luke's Anglican Church in Milikuno in Udenu local government area, Enugu State. 1 p.m. Interment and condolence visit followed by the in-laws, friends, and well wishes. Saturday, 10th October 2020, condolence continues. Sunday, out in service at St. Luke's Anglican Church in Milikuno. Mama, may your gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. Signed, Samuel Chijuke Makata for the family. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's now have a bit of sports as Court of Arbitration for Sports has set April 21, 2021 date to deliver final verdict on the appeal case filed by former Super Eagles coach Samson Siasia against the live ban placed on him by FIFA for bribery allegations. For more on sports updates, let's join Tamara Ibiwe.